Now, what can't pass through the plasma membrane? So we cover large molecules and high polar molecules. But what about, we talked about partial charges. Now we have ions. So now we're talking about full-on negative or positive charges. So ions and solutes. So here are the major electrolytes in your body. So here we have sodium chloride, potassium, calcium, and also bicarbonate, magnesium, and phosphate. So these are all solutes. And notice that they either have full charges, not partial charges. So these, as you see, these are valence charges. This is plus one, negative one, plus two. So they're whole numbers. They're not partial polar charges. Now these are very important for excitable cells. I'll leave that more. I think for MD6 was it neurology, but yeah, this is or actually I think you're coming up with this very soon in MD2. Excitable cells, muscle cells, cardiac cells. Yeah, very excited. Now these ions and solutes, they're not found in equal concentrations between the inside and the outside of a cell. So there is a difference between the inside concentrations of these solutes and the outside extracellular fluid concentrations of these solutes. This is what we call a concentration gradient. That's just a term that refers simply to the unequal balance and distribution of these ions and solutes. Now, which ions and solutes are found greater in greater concentrations inside and which ions and solutes are found in greater concentrations on the outside? So this is a, I keep forgetting if it's a simile or a metaphor. Yeah, English majors don't judge me. I wasn't an English major, I was a biology major. But so how do I memorize this? I use this little, let's just call it analogy. So here we have the ocean, right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to throw a banana in the ocean, and this banana is representing a cell. So this is a cell at rest. Now, what mineral is found in abundant quantities in bananas? Potassium. So at rest, a cell has a higher potassium concentration than the surrounding fluid. Now here of ocean, the ocean, right? So what happens if you, or how, if you drink ocean water, how does it taste? It tastes very salty, right? And what's the chemical formula for table salt? So here we have extracellular fluid, so sodium chloride. So the ocean is very salty, so the extracellular fluid has more sodium and more chloride ions than the inside of a cell. Now, the thing about the ocean, it has a lot of seashells as well, right? So seashells, what mineral is found in abundance in seashells? We have a lot of calcium. So calcium is more abundant in the, or higher concentrations in the extracellular fluid than in the cell. But the thing about the minerals in seashells, it's not just calcium, it's calcium carbonate. So this is different from, slightly different from bicarbonate, but this is also how I remember it. Calcium carbonate, there's more bicarbonate in the extracellular fluid than in the cell at rest. So this is what we have here, extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid. We have more sodium and chloride in the surrounding extracellular fluid. We have more potassium in that banana, again, the representing our cell. So a cell at rest has more potassium concentration than the surrounding extracellular fluid. And we also have more calcium and more bicarbonate than the extracellular fluid than in the intracellular fluid. Now things like phosphate and magnesium, this one you just have to memorize. I can't think of a good metaphor right, or analogy right now, but phosphate and magnesium, just know these are in greater concentrations in intracellular fluid. But if you don't like that little cartoon or analogy, then this is what you're looking at. So again, you see more potassium inside of a cell and more sodium chloride in the extracellular fluid outside of a cell. You do have more bicarbonate outside in the extracellular fluid than in the inside of the cell. And you also have more calcium in the extracellular fluid compared to the inside of the cell. So why am I talking about all these ions and solutes? Well, let's look at the Chem 7 panel. This You might see this with, you're going to get very familiar with this because again, you have a standard blood test, so you're going to get at least this information. So let's draw the fishbone right here. Now, what goes into each section of the fishbone? So this is how I remember it. So sodium and chloride, they go side by side, just like in our little example there, sodium and chloride are a pair. So sodium on this side and chloride over here. Now potassium, so how do I know that potassium goes there? So this is the way I remember it. Potassium is below sodium and bicarbonate is below chloride. So positive and positive, remember sodium and chloride are next to each other. So all the cations, so you have potassium and sodium, 
in the same column. And then you have your anions, the negative charge salt ions. We have bicarbonate right below the negatively charged chloride. Now here we have blood urine, nitrogen, bun, and creatinine. So again, when you cover, I think in MD3, when you cover the nephrology and the kidneys, you're going to learn a lot more about this. So these are indicators if they're too high. Remember, you have all these nitrogenous wastes, such as urea, uric acid, and creatinine. So your kidneys are trying to, in the healthy kidneys, you're trying to excrete this from your body so it doesn't build up in your body. So these are nitrogen measures of nitrogenous wastes. And you also have glucose. That's more of an MD4 topic when we talk about metabolism and diabetes mellitus. So, but we're going to talk more about this. So these values are concentrations, but what concentrations of what? Again, this is from a blood test. So these are the concentrations of these ions and solutes in the blood plasma. Now, this is a little asterisk here. So the thing about these values right here, these may vary depending on the lab, hospital, or institution. Now, these values I picked up from the USMLE Step 1 first aid. So this is the one, I think they do have that on the first page of the USMLE, but I think most people most advise you to actually memorize the values because it saves you time. Now, I don't have any clever mnemonics. I think you kind of have to just brute force memorize these values right here. But the real whole reason why they say you should memorize those for the step one, step two, is that it saves you time from flipping back to these. They do give you these values, but saves you time if you already have these memorized and know what the normal range. And again, homeostasis is not just about a single value. Notice that these are all ranges. And again, these will be covered more in MD3 and MD4. So this is for your future reference. Not that they're not important, but I'm calling my shots right here. And let's just concentrate more on this part. 